everyone, welcome to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'm going to show you how I painted up this Citadel Realm of Battle game table. The uh, awesome table from Games Workshop. So, of course, I painted the majority of the table outside because you get the fresh air and it's less bad for fumes. So I put out the table and the pieces uh, in the proximate setup that I really wanted. But, of course, you can obviously move around modular setup. And for this, I also purchased the Citadel Realm of Battle painting uh, kit, which comes with a brown and ochre paintbrush, scorched brown, uh, scorched grass, grass, and glue. And it's really handy because that way you get a consistent paint job between all the pieces, and it's easy to replicate in case you want to buy more pieces. I also just bought a cheap roller and a rolling kit uh, because it will save you a lot of time when applying the brown paint to the pieces, having to apply them with the roller. Also a base uh, black matte primer, uh, and I'll also be using an airbrush for certain pieces as well, but I'll be going over that after. So I started off by priming all the pieces black, and that way it gives them some deep shading in case uh, you know you just want to produce a little more shading effect. Also, I didn't really know the material very well for this table, so I just wanted to make sure to give it something that the paint could cling to. So that was uh, really important. Uh, other colors that I might recommend are just a brown primer, or a green primer depending on what color you really want the table to look like, or uh, the black primer head. I really like, I just use a black primer from Army Painter. And as you can see here, I just quickly paint it to the outside. That way I don't get any, it's a lot less on the lungs, uh, not very many fumes. And obviously remember to paint away from the fume, uh, the direction of the wind, taking consideration of the wind. And uh, yeah, and also it dries really quickly because it's a really nice sunny, hot day outside. So I primed all the pieces black, and the next I added my brown. Now this is just the brown from the Citadel Realm Battle Table uh, kit into the roller kit, and I just rolled it on. As you can see, a roller was a great idea because it saves you so much time. I actually got this idea from uh, Mr. Watching Paint Dry, Paul Graham. Uh, I give a shout out to him. This was not my idea. I just saw his tutorial and I definitely thought I was thinking about it ahead of time. I was thinking maybe a roller would be a great idea, but uh, his tutorial really recommended it, and I thank him very much. And uh, yeah, I just use it to save myself a lot of time because that way you can get a nice even coat and a nice great coverage with very little time. So all I did was try to get in all the surfaces that were really flat. As you can see here, it's really great for the flat pieces because it just goes on super quick. Um, basically, they give you enough paint to paint all the tables, uh, so all six pieces with a little bit of extra paint. If you are getting the extension pieces, the extra two, I definitely recommend getting another kit because you will run out of grass and you will run out of paint. And then I just took the brush that was included in the kit, a pretty large uh, brush, and I just painted in all those surfaces that I couldn't get with the uh, rolling. And this didn't take very long. So as you can see here, I'm just touching up the paint job. I'm gonna keep the rock black because I'm gonna go over it with the gray later. But uh, yeah, it's just the brush saves you time. And here's what it looks like when you're all done and dried. Make sure it's completely dry before proceeding to the next step. The roller is also great because it doesn't get any bristles in on the paint job and it saves you a whole lot of time. Basically the goal for this tutorial is to um, get a really nice effect with very little uh, time. So next I added the ochre to my new palette. The ochre is basically a mustard yellow. It's equivalent to the ochre from the Citadel range as well. And I just wipe it off my towel and basically I'm just going to give a heavy dry brush to um, the entire surface, all the areas that are going to be the earth brown. And this pr the purpose of this dry brush is just to bring out the awesome details. There's some great, um, there's some great feel to this terrain, and there's some great textures, and you really want to bring them out. You don't want a flat brown. Now most of it will be paint, will be put over with grass anyway. So feel free to just figure out the parts you want to put grass on and, and do that there. If you uh, if you have a limited amount of paint, I have plenty of paint. The the small bottle of ochre really lasted, and I saw plenty left over because I'm just doing a quick dry brush over these areas. As you can see now, the ochre is bringing out the yellow tones in the table, and it looks great. So now I went back to inside and I painted all the rocky surfaces of the model with a color called rock from the. Uh, Minotaur range from Badger. I'm using an airbrush because once again the goal is to save time and the airbrush provides a great solid coat to the surfaces and saves you a whole lot of time. As you can see I just used a cloth to mask out the uh, 
the edges. And I also I didn't care too badly because this is gonna be for battle reports, so I didn't mind. I did a nice blend between the rocks and uh, the mud beneath it, so it has a little bit of gray brown tones to it, and it looks good. And then I went over the cracks in the earth as well that are gonna be gray. And as you can see, I'm using a Patriot 105, which is a great middle size airbrush, and it saves you a whole lot of time. Just covering all the surfaces really nice and evenly, and uh, this rock is a great solid uh, dark bluish gray, and it's great for the setting the foundation for rocks. And then what I did just, just to emphasize, because this will be used for battle reports, and I really wanted it a little more emphasized. Uh, I went over all the edges of the rocks and the cracks with the rocks with dusty gray, a uh, dusty ground, another color from the Minotaur range from Badger, with my same Patriot 105. As you can see, I'm just basically using it to go around the edges and just highlight them so it really stands out. And even from a distance, you can clearly see the rocks. The other option would be to use a shade in the crevices as well. I decided uh, not to use them. I looked at them from a distance and you can barely tell if a shade was applied. So I just decided to rather than shade the crevices, just to highlight the areas around the crevices, making them uh, really emphasized with this dusty ground, which is a great light gray. And uh, it's a great color for Minotaur as well. And once again, the airbrush saves a lot of time, even with all these little pieces. As you can see, there were a lot of areas to cover with the, uh, the dusty ground. And then once again, I'm just going over the edges and highlighting the areas around them. And I did the same with all the little rocks as well that are all over the, uh, the terrain pieces as well. And then next, I turned my attention to all the skulls. There are tons of skulls on this board, and they, there's so much great detail, as I mentioned. So there's little pits of skulls and little skulls all over the rocks. And of course, I gave them a really nice um, base coat with Ushapti bone, which is a great medium tone brown uh, or light light brown but the medium tone of those colors and uh, it's great and once again the goal was just to get I just decided to cover all the surface of those pits with filled with skulls and uh, I will be just to give some more definition to these areas after the Ushapti bone is dried I'll be giving them an Agrax Earthshade so I took the Agrax Earthshade and I watered it down considerably I did a one-to-one -one mix of Agrax Earthshade to water and I just put it in all these areas. That way it gives the uh, older, dirty, muddy appearance to all the skulls, which is what we're going for. It's a, it's a pit of skulls, so it should pretty much be older and, and pretty dirty. Plus it gives some great detail to them, and that way it's not just a, a bland sea of light brown. And then when uh, the shade was completely dry, I gave a quick dry brush to all the skull areas with Screaming Skull. The very, very light tone, which is even lighter than Ushabti Bone. And this was just to create some variation in tones and, uh, and keep that dusted appearance in all the skulls. It was a very quick step. I just took a large brush and applied it very quickly to them. But uh, yeah, just to you know make them pop a little bit more when, you hit, when the eyes hit them. And that's it. Basically, the all the paint job is done. Now it's time to apply the grass to the model. So what I did was I started out by, I did half of a board at a time. That way you didn't have too much glue at the board at the same time. And also you can just dump the extra grass. And uh, you did, I did find myself a couple of points of like being pretty low on grass because I applied it pretty heavily to the board, let it dry, and then remove, then just dumped the excess back into the, the bags. So what I did was I started off by masking out which areas I wanted to be having gaps. I just picked nice areas of ground to be clear of the grass and then filled in the rest. And what I did for the glue was I emptied out half this PVA glue that was included um, into another container and then I watered it down with a one-to-one -one mix, basically a PVA glue to water. And that way you get a nice thin glue which dries faster and it's great for attachment of, of grass. Applied it to the surface entirely and then added the scorched grass that was included in the kit. Um, I just, as I said, I just added heaping amounts of it, let it dry entirely and then wiped it off. Uh, so I dumped it off and then added it back in the bag and repeated this process. So I did well with scorched grass, as you can see here, just applying it to the surface. And when it was done, I took, uh, they also came with a little, a little bag of grass, which is just a lighter tone. 
and it looks more, it's a lighter green, so I just apply that to certain parts of each board, just create some uh, tonal variation in the grass, and that way it just has some nice patches of light amongst the burnt grass. And then afterwards, I just let it dry. I let it dry for about half an hour each side, or about 20 minutes each side. That way I knew that the uh, the, the watered down glue has, was completely dry. And then I just repeated this process. And once again, I masked it out, painted in, or just uh, filled in the rest with the glue, brushed it down, and then applied the, the grass to it. And that's what I just kept doing for each board. I did half on a time. That way, um, as I said, you always had plenty of grass to apply to it. And as I said, the um, the kit was basically the perfect amount of grass that you needed. I ran out in the end, so I definitely recommend conserving the grass, uh, putting down towels as I did here. That way you can easily wipe it off and contain the, the extra grass so that you'll always be able to use it and don't run out. Um, and is, if you buy the extra pieces, those extra two, I definitely recommend picking up another kit because you will run out of paint and you will run out of out of grass and when the process was done I decided just to protect it and as well to dull down the coat so it's less shiny I gave um, all the pieces a couple very quick matte varnish coats um, I used the army builder matte varnish and here it is that's what the table looks like when completely done um, the grass is now protected the surface is protected and in the end it turned out really nicely as you can see the, uh, especially the dusted ground really emphasizes the areas and the rocks. The rocks turn out really nicely. They're they're a little bit boring in the middle, but it's okay because I usually put terrain pieces anyway. And in the end, it just turned out a great table. It didn't take me very long, as you can see. Uh, the key is just to do things like use an airbrush, a roller, uh, just to save you a little bit of time. It's very consistent, and I think it will just produce some amazing battle reports because uh, the Citadel Rome battle table, it's modular, and I really love it. You can move around the terrain pieces, and they fit together quite nicely and they'll produce a lot of different tables with uh, very little effort so it's very cool I'm glad the way I'm really happy with the way it turned out um, also when gluing just make sure to keep a little bit of glue away from the edges uh, sorry a little bit of gap near the at ed each edge and make sure just to uh, that way you keep a little gap and that the grass does not fall between the pieces and creates extra distance between them you really want them to fit together quite smoothly and nicely And here's just another angle of the table, as you can see. You can clearly see those uh, the recesses, especially because they're highlighted by the dusty ground. And I kept some patches of brown. So thank you so much for watching this painting tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you really liked it, check out the warp. Check out the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. Not only get to see this week's painting tutorial, which is a cool terrain piece that I use in my gaming table, you also get to see many other painting tutorials, including monster creatures, walkers, tanks, special characters, plus you get to see at least the next 10 episodes of Miniature Painting 101 and some battle reports on the Citadel Realm of Battle table. So go check it out, I think you'll really enjoy it. So thank you very much for watching, please like the video, comment in the comment section down below, and subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so, it really does help a lot. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting everyone.